Welcome, I'm Ronnie and I want to introduce you to a new system for more fire protection that can literally save your life and protect your home. In a report by the US Fire Department, it is estimated that there are 360,000 home fires across the United States every year. Every single day, seven people die as a result of a domestic fire. And did you know that 47% of domestic fires start at the kitchen? And I'm Talon, here to help Ronnie out today to show you just how easy the system is to install. Thank you, Talon. I want to install this system at my mother's place. She's been leaving the stove on and forgetting about it, and that has us all a little worried. Sure. Uh, well, it's a pretty easy process. Let's get started. Uh, first thing is to remove the stove. Next, we're going to remove the upper cover to create access for the extinguisher. Next, we're going to install the cylinder in the control panel. We'll put the container on the bracket with the gauge facing us. Then we'll need some space for the flexible hose and the discharge valve. Please make sure the safety ball valve is in a closed position. We don't want the system to go off before we complete the installation. Good point. Yes, it's closed. So we built this box which will go around the vent pipe where we're going to place the control panel. We were going to put it at the back of the cabinet, but with a little extra effort, we get easier access to all the wires and the control panel inside. Uh, next we'll do the exhaust hood. We're going to drill a one quarter inch off center. On the cabinet side we'll use a hole drill bit, and on the hood side we'll use a step drill bit. Is it going to damage the range hood? Uh, no, of course not. We'll need to find the space between the fans to put the hose through and to make sure that it doesn't interfere with their work. Uh, now we're going to locate the nozzle detector bracket. It has to go on the hood bottom margins. Uh, to be aligned with the cooktop. This one's obviously a little too large. Mm -hmm. uh, next we'll measure the hood and cut the bracket to size. Uh, next after the bracket is sized, we'll mark four holes and with a nine and three quarter inch drill bit, uh, put this in place. So the nozzle is being screwed to the joint from the bottom of the bracket and on top of the bracket, the elbow and other fittings are connected to the hose with these two joints. That's convenient. For sure. We'll connect the nozzle to the edges of the burner and make sure that the nozzle's straight edges are parallel to the wall. After we have placed the nozzle and hose, we need to install the heat detector. At the top of the hood, the wire goes through the same hole as the hose did. Then we run it along the lower bracket to cover all the burners area. The end of the line resistor is where all the wires end up and we fit it into the hood. So the manual pull station shouldn't be close to the stove and it should be accessible for children or people in wheelchairs. Yeah, that's why we're going to install it here. It should be about 42 to 54 inches off the floor. And let's not forget about the end-of-line resistors that have to attach to the station terminal. So this unit connects at the wall at the bottom of the stove. We have different units for gas or electric stoves, and in this house we have a gas stove. The disconnecting box connects to the control panel and controls the gas supply to the stove. So in case of a fire, this box will disconnect the gas supply to the stove? Yes, that's correct. The manufacturer recommends a certified gas fitter to connect the gas valve to the gas hose, but I'll show you how I do it. The box goes here in the back bottom of the stove. There is one cable that goes all the way to the control panel on the top cover. This four wire cable supplies power to the control panel and receives control signal by the panel. Another wire is connected to the gas valve. This box is powered by the standard wall supply and it had a control plug on the other side that allows us to turn it on and off. It accommodates a 12 volt DC power supply. It's fit perfectly to the space at the bottom corner of the stove side. Once we're done, we should go through the checklist and test the system. Perfect. First the cylinder. Secured and the ball valve is closed. 
Hose and nozzle. The hose is connected to the nozzle and the cylinder. The nozzle is directed to the center of the burners to get complete coverage of the cooking area. The linear heat detector. Uh, located on the bottom bracket, the end of line resistor is connected and wired under the hood plenum. Mm -hmm. What about the manual pull station? Easily accessible and wired to the end of line resistor. Oh, and the disconnecting box. The light is off for now, that's because we disconnected the power. So what's left? Just the control panel. So it may look like electrical work, but anyone can do it. The ME300 here is a standalone system that supervises the detector, the pull system, all outputs, and if a significant change in temperature occurs, it'll activate the fire extinguishing system to put the fire out. The box is connected to a 12 volt DC power supply and contain backup battery that lasts 72 hours. Yeah, we must install the cylinder to allow for eye contact for regular maintenance inspections. Uh, as you remember, all the power is disconnected, so we'll connect our rechargeable battery to our panel here and connect the 12 volt DC connectors here to the panel at the back. So first we'll install the terminal block and the connection box adjacent to the panel so all external wires can connect in there. So now we'll connect the linear heat detector to the terminal. We take the green and black cables and install them into input 1. The manual pull station cables are yellow and green and they'll go to input 2. Now the extinguisher discharge solenoid valve is connected to the control panel with the orange and black cables to output 1. Note that the orange is positive and the black is negative. Now we connect the disconnecting box control to the terminal of output 3. And we can now power it up. In order for the fire extinguisher to activate, you'll need to turn this lever horizontally and confirm that the gauge is green. So we check that the light is on on the disconnection box and the green light is flickering on the control panel. Uh, as long as no other lights are on, you're good to go. Great job, Talon. Thanks, no problem. So once a month, you want to check the green light on the control panel as well as the pressure gauge on the cylinder and you're good to go. Fantastic. I feel much safer for my mum now. Thanks. That's it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to visit our website www.kitchenfirestop.com.